guys hope you are doing well today I wanted to share with you some of the embellishments that I'm making for my December daily journal and if you see my hands moving a little bit around in this video more than normal I did start talking on the live kind of video but um, my family and stuff got a little bit loud and it just seemed better that I just did a voiceover so that's kind of why you might see my hands gesturing a lot um, but anyway, I'm going to be working on, I think, three or four different embellishments on this video. And I think this will be the only video I have with the embellishments. And then I'm going to move on to actually um, working on the pages. So um, I am a little bit behind, but that's okay. Um, I you typically get a little behind at the beginning, uh, but I have a little more free time as the month goes on because I have more days off. So today I'm just working on the embellishments this is an envelope it's actually a junk journal or junk journal I'm sorry a piece of junk mail that I got in um, the mail obviously and I decided to tea stain the envelope and then I'm just going to do some collaging on that so I believe in the uh, previous video that I showed for my December daily I mentioned some of the Etsy shops that I was using um, this is one of the shops this is KB and friends I ended up getting three different little kits from her uh, they are super adorable I highly recommend them they cut super nice because uh, they weren't like really difficult to fussy cut so if you're not a fussy cutter it, they weren't hard at all um, and I like the fact that they actually uh, had some of the antique kind of white border around them so they're very easy to cut out so there I was just showing you a new glue that I started using. It's called 3-in-1. It's from Beacon. Uh, I did a little screen free so you could see a little bit more. But it is a super awesome glue. Uh, for this junk journaling, I noticed that there's a lot of things that you do collage and things on where you want the paper to be very flat. So, and if you use like the scotch uh, tacky glue or some of those other liquid glues, it tends to wrinkle and warp the paper. This is an alcohol based acid free glue that it also can be used on fabric and I just purchased it. I've seen some other YouTubers that do junk journaling use it and they they kind of ranted and raved about it so I thought I'd try it out. I got it on Amazon and it is awesome. It really really does keep the paper very flat so if you're looking for something like that I definitely recommend this glue. Like I said it's an alcohol based glue so it dries relatively quickly and it's also easy to clean up if you kind of get a little over the edges. So right after I did that screen print I showed you that little kind of square kind of brown rubber thing. That really helps to rub off that glue and that's just a I don't know if it's called a glue remover. I've had it for quite some time in my stash, um, but I think you can get it on Amazon. Uh, if you have any questions about that, I should be able to find it. Just let me know in the comments below and I can and look it up and, and get that for you and link that for you in one of the comments. So really, I'm just taking a bunch of different things that I have in my stash and I am collaging it on the envelope. So I put down the music paper. That was some wrapping paper I got from Tuesday morning. The other coffee stain paper was dictionary paper. I have some of the coffee dyed cheesecloth and then some of that fabric from it's called um, Cotton Cottage I believe. If nothing else I will leave the Etsy store below or I left it on my previous video so if you're curious um, they're just quilter squares basically but they're a perfect size for like junk journaling and things like that where you don't need a huge amount of fabric and you want a variety pack. So uh, I got that and I, I really like that and basically I just trim or cut a little snippet um, and then I just rip it so I have kind of a frayed edge so I like that look for this particular journal. So I'm just finishing off kind of gluing down on my little pieces and I'm just trimming off any of the excess and then I wanted to keep that little window on the envelope at first but it just wasn't working out right I think because it has the double window it just didn't look quite right. So I end up taking some of this coffee dyed and tea dyed paper and I'm just going to put it over um, the window, two little kind of chunks, one's a little darker than the other one. And then I'm going to end up putting my little sled little guys over on the left more. And then I will go through some of my vintage ephemera and I'm going to end up adding a stamp to the right hand corner. So you're going to see that here in just a couple minutes. But I end up liking how this looks a little bit better. Um, the windows are just kind of distracting. I really did want the little sled guy over there on the right, but I think he ends up working out just fine um, over to the left. At first I wasn't going to put anything to the left, but then with these kind of blank squares it felt a little, I don't know, kind of plain. So, so you'll see here in a little bit I'm going to move that sledder over to the left just a little bit. And I love this coffee dyed paper. It's super pretty. Um, it was a lot of fun to do actually too. I wasn't sure if I was going to enjoy coffee steining uh, the paper, but actually it was really fun. I, I don't know. I just, it was, it was fun. I know some people don't like doing that, but, um, but yeah, it kind of was therapeutic for me. So 
So here's where I'm going to add my little sled guy over to the left. Um, like I said, I really liked him on the right, but it just looked funny, and I didn't know what else to put there on the left. So, uh, so here, here's some of that vintage ephemera that I have. I'm going to end up using those stamps there on the right. I kind of tried out a couple different things, and I ended up using just the stamps. I like this little guy. I thought it looked good with the sled dude, and I'm just going to glue that there in the top right. It is like a self or not self adhesive, but it's like one of those licking kind of stamps. But I didn't think that was probably going to stick very well with the fabric. So I just ended up using some of the three-in-one glue. Now this is kind of a vintagey, creamy color, but I wanted it to be a little bit more brown to go with the papers that I was using on the background. So I did just take some of my um, vintage photo distress ink and add that around the edges and such. So there he's glued down, and then I end up stitching all around the envelope, and that embellishment is done. Now I'm going to work on uh, two tags. And they're approximately the same size, and I'm just kind of cutting them down. This is more of that tea stain paper. Uh, the tea stain paper is a little bit lighter than the coffee stain paper, so the paper that I'm using right now to as a template to cut the corners, that is the coffee dyed paper. And then the tea stain paper is the one below it, so it's just a little bit lighter. Here are some of those doilies that I got from Her Heart, Her Hands, or sorry, Her Hands, Her Heart. Super cute pack. It was a nice um, variety pack, which I really liked. Uh, you know, I have you can get buy a pack of doilies and tea stain them or, or coffee stain them, but it was nice that it was come a variety pack. It was small ones, big ones, a heart, different kinds. It was really nice. So I am just kind of doing these two tags at the same time. I am going to end up adding this dictionary paper to the left one, and I'm going to move the bigger doily over to the paper that has the um, dictionary because I'm going to end up liking that better, and then that smaller dolly will end up going on the right-hand side. So I'm just kind of getting that situated, figuring out how I want it. I'm going to glue that down. Um, I didn't like the kind of plain edge there, so you're going to see that I'm going to glue this a little bit off the tag, and I'm just going to trim off that excess um, that didn't look quite right there. And I like to use my bone folder when I'm using this glue, because I really want a nice, good, adhered flat piece so that the corners and edges aren't rolling up so I end up gluing around everything and then I use my uh, bone folder to kind of smear it down or spread out the glue underneath. Next I'm trimming out some of this Cartabella paper which is super pretty paper. I'm going to trim it so it fits at the bottom of the tag. I will ink around the edges. Uh, it already has a little bit of distressing around it but I wanted to make sure that that distressing was all the way around all sides. So I'm just taking that vintage photo ink from Tim Holtz and then I'm going to glue that down to the bottom. And then what I'm going to do is get some more of that dictionary paper and then glue that dictionary paper um, to kind of the middle section of this particular tag. And I will ink around all edges of both tags with the vintage photo. So here's that dictionary paper. I'm just kind of figuring out where it's going to go, tearing it off, and then I will glue that down. And here you can see where I've moved the doilies now. I thought the little doily would look better on this part of the page. So just smearing that out, I'm going to trim off the excess, and then I will add the doily down to the words the bottom of this particular card or tag. And one thing I did notice is when I did coffee stain this dictionary paper, it's that real thin kind of Webster's dictionary kind of paper. Um, it did get really, really super crispy and crunchy, which was cool, but it also made it a lot um, more fragile. So. If you ever use or coffee stain something like that and then you want to use it, I recommend um, backing it on some cardstock so it kind of gives a base to it and then it doesn't, won't crack and crumble on you as easily. So here I'm gluing down the doily. I will trim off the excess. I will use some of that cheesecloth there that's been coffee stained. I'm going to put that in the bottom and then I'm going to layer on top of it some of this gold ribbon that I've just had in my stash for quite some time. And then I'm going to stitch all the way around the entire tag. And then I'll trim off some of this excess um, ribbon and cheesecloth because there's just a little bit too much overhang. I do keep a little of the overhang, but I didn't want to have quite so much. So I'm just using my scissors and trimming that off. Keeping the ends kind of at an angle, I thought that would look a little nicer than just cutting them off straight. And then I thought I needed just a little bit more, so I'm going to be auditioning some buttons. I really like that green one, and I did go through quite a few, and I ended up settling on this red one. Uh, one trick if you're trying to add stitching to your buttons so it doesn't look naked, um, one thing I'd like to do is to add it to a card and then that way you can stitch on there and not have to try to just keep wrapping it around or you can wrap it around. Um, I was just doing it that way. And then I'm going to hole punch 
and then I thought it needed a little bit more so I'm going to pull out the Cartabella sticker sheets and I'm going to end up adding this little candy jar here in the top right. I'm just going to add that there and I thought that worked perfectly. I think it went well with the um, holly paper. Now I'm going to work on this last tag here. I'm going to add the doily down. Um, I'm going to add the little circle girl. I will ink around her. I'm going to add some lace trim. That is lace trim that I got from Stampin' Up! quite some time ago. I'm 100% positive I, that is retired now, but um, I did get it when I was a Stampin' Up! demonstrator several years ago. And I'm just going to add that to the left hand side, and then I'm going to trim it off a little long, and then I'm also going to add these pearls. So I'm just going to use my 3-in-1 beacon glue to glue down the stitching, or the stitching, I'm sorry, the um, trim, and the little circle. And I'm also going to use that same glue to glue down the uh, flatback pearls. Once I have all this glued down, I will ink around all the edges again. And I thought that the lace looked a little bit too white, and so did the pearls. So you're going to see that I'm going to take that vintage photo distress ink, and I'm going to actually add some of that coloring to the lace and then I do add it to the pearls as well. Um, I'm not sure if it's going to stay but it seemed like it didn't want to rub off so I just kind of toned down that very bright white of the pearls and I liked how it looked better. I also added some stitching around there. I thought it needed just a little bit more. Um, so that is pretty much this tag. I'm going to punch a hole at the top and I will add a little bit more of that uh, lace to the top. And then I'll just use my stapler, my tiny attacher, to fix that. Because it's a pretty small piece. I didn't want to waste the piece, but I also didn't want to cut more off. And I thought that was fine. Um, if it's a little bit uh, too short later on, I can always add more. The hole is open for me to add more um, thread or twine or something like that later on. So I'm going to be working now on my last embellishment for this video. Um, this is just going to be like a little topper. It could go at the top of the page, um, top of a photo or something like that, or even at the bottom. Uh, I'm just going to be adding uh, this wrapping paper to the tea dyed paper. I'm just going to glue it down so that one side could be written on if you would like to do that. Um, but mostly just for a base, this wrapping paper is pretty flexible and thin, and I, so I wanted to have something a little bit more substantial. So I'm going to ink around all the edges, and I'm going to embellish it. And while I'm doing that, I want to say thank you guys so much for joining me. Uh, hopefully you're enjoying this type of December Daily. This is a little bit different for me. Normally I do the pocket pages, but I really have been interested in into junk journaling lately. So let me know in the comments below uh, if any of you guys are interested in junk journaling. Is that something you'd want to see more videos of? I've been really excited about it. So my December Daily is definitely going to be this kind of style. Um, but I would like to know if you guys are interested in seeing more of this, you know, after December. Um, if that's something you would want to see more um, handmade journals and junk journaling and things like that, uh, junk journal with me videos, things like that, definitely let me those know that I'm tongue tied. Uh, definitely let me know in the comments below. Um, and if you like the video, um, if you like December Daily, make sure you guys give me a thumbs up. And if you have any stories you want to share with me about what you're doing for December Daily, I'd love to hear that. Anytime you guys leave comments, I love that. I love hearing from you guys and chit chatting with you. So definitely tell me what you guys are up to uh, for your December. I would love to hear. Um, I'm always interested in seeing what other people are doing. And if you have your another a channel or anything like that you'd like to share with everyone in the comments below, please do that too. So I'm pretty much finishing that up, and I want to thank you guys so much for joining me. I will talk to you again next time. Have a great December. Bye.